if you're putting in your own cabinets, maybe you got them from Ikea or the big box store, and they got those plastic little adjustable legs with the track that goes on the wall, but you're putting in a big island, you definitely don't want to use those plastic legs because you put a five, 600 pound countertop on top there, and the whole thing is liable to just tip over and kill somebody. So I'm gonna show you how to build a rock solid kick out of three quarter inch plywood. And then better yet, I'm gonna show you my amazing method for getting this thing perfectly level and rock solid to the ground. Even if you're an experienced cabinet installer, you will appreciate this method. I remember when I first learned it from a guy named Gary, I was like, yeah, this is definitely a hundred times better than the way I used to do it. So let's get into this thing. Now, when it comes to building the kicks, I built this all out of three quarter inch plywood. You could get away with five eighths plywood. That would be more than strong enough. You want to make sure that you rip these long straight pieces really straight so that they don't have any kind of a, a curve in them. To do that, I like to cut them on the table saw. If you have one, I'll cut the piece of plywood in half and then work off the factory edges. Hey, Scooter. That way you just end up with nice straight pieces. If you only have a skill saw or a circular saw, definitely use a saw guide and take extra care to get them nice and straight. That way everything is gonna be sitting flat. For the cross pieces here, it's just more of the three quarter inch plywood. When you're laying out how deep you wanna make your kick, just take into account the extra thickness of the, um, the kick material. I've done a two and a half inch overhang to match up with the other side. Anywhere from two inches to three inches is fine for the overhang. And then when it comes to nailing it together, I've just used an 18 gauge nailer. I did videotape everything when I was building this, but the camera was not turned on. So right now you're just seeing some fake B-roll of me pretending to build it. <laughs> inch and a half nails, 18 gauge, super quick. You could screw it all together, but that would take a long time. Um, you don't need any glue or anything like that. So just nail that all together. Now, in terms of this middle piece here, I have done two separate kicks and then joined them together. Makes it a little more robust along that middle section there. If you were a little short on materials, wanted to save a couple bucks and speed things up, you could have just gone cross pieces all the way across and then put in a little extra support in the middle. But this is my friend's place, so I want the extra step. When it comes to cutting things out, you can definitely cut out, we've cut out a couple grills over here for the return air. Over here, we cut out a little section for the vacuum pan. It's no worries to cut things out here in terms of structure, because as we go along, you'll see how we're gonna support everything here and level it out. Now, when it comes to getting this thing nice and level, you have a couple options here. It's always nice to keep the exact same height of your wall cabinets on your island cabinets, but if your floor has a giant dip or a big hump, it's okay to split the difference a little bit and not be quite the exact same height. In this scenario here, the floor is pretty level, so we are gonna keep it the same level as the outer cabinets. Now you can use a four foot level and kind of level across and go that way. The best thing to use is gonna be a laser level. If you're looking for a laser level, this, in my opinion, is the best one for the kind of the best value. It's not that expensive. I'll put a link to it in the description if you're in the market for one. And then the way that you do this to make it a lot easier is just set your laser level up on the outer cabinet, take a scrap of plywood, put it to the bottom of the case here, flush this up with the bottom of the case, and then pencil on where that laser line comes in. Now you've got a little mark that you can just set on this here. You raise it up till it's back to the same mark, and then you're gonna be the exact same height as your outer cabinets. That's the easiest way that I've found of doing it. And when it comes to getting this thing nice and level up to this line all over the place, wood shims are gonna be your best bet as a kind of a temporary way to get this thing sitting exactly where you want it. Not a long-term solution though. What I like to do is I will take some of these plywood blocks and then in a really crafty fashion, you can get this thing rock solid. I'll show you that after we getting this. Oh, I messed it up right at the end. Once we get this thing sitting level. We'll start in the far corner here. Now I've got the four corners secured. You can check it in a couple spots. It is bang on all the way across. So I'm gonna show you how to get this thing perfectly secure. But before we start nailing anything on and securing this up, let's just throw a cabinet on here and we'll put it where we have a shim. 
We'll throw a four foot level onto the existing cabinets just to confirm that everything is working out. You can never be too careful when it comes to getting everything set properly. As I learned on these outer cabinets here with the Ikea cabinets, it's a little bit of a different system with the, the rail and these metal pieces on here. So double check everything before you start putting things into stone. Also should mention too, is I have my layout line. So this will be perfectly parallel to the other side. Get this thing sitting nice where it has to go before you get it all shimmed to level. Otherwise it might not quite be level when you move it into place. It's sitting perfectly now. I like to just keep out my, my laser on and my little block handy just to keep checking it to make sure nothing shifts around as we're securing it. Also will mention, I put a couple pocket holes on each end that I can screw into the plywood after just to hold this island in place. You don't need pocket holes, but you could put a little toe screw in there or even use some kind of an angle bracket. I kind of like putting it on the outside. That way, once the cabinets are secure in place, you can adjust it accordingly if you need to. To secure the cabinets onto the kick, I will just put a couple of screws, maybe like four or five, through the cabinet into the edge of the plywood. Just pre-drill the hole so you're not gonna split your plywood. Now, in order to get this thing rock solid, what I like to do is take these plywood scraps that are a little bit shorter than your kick, take some wood glue, I'll glue them all up, and then I'll nail them on with my nail gun. I like to put some inch and a quarter nails so they don't shoot out the other side. Just nail them on with the wood glue. When the wood glue dries, it's essentially gonna be another piece of plywood down to the floor, rock solid. That'll hold thousands and thousands of pounds. That is nice and secure. We've got the blocks in all over the place. Give it like 10 or 15 minutes before you throw the cabinets on there, just to let that glue tack up a hair. If you wanna get rolling right away, throw some screws in there. And if you're working on your kitchen right now, you're gonna have gables and kicks to fit. To do that perfectly, check out this video right over here. Oh Jesus, I've made eye contact with Scooter and he's back. You're still hanging, you wanna be in the shot. All right, you're, you're destined to be a star, Scoot. This method here is amazing. Oh my God, what am I trying to say? Scooter, you are messing with my whole mojo.